a bird cage. In a practical sense, nothing more than an enclosure designed to house birds. But over the years, it has become more of a common symbol among many cultures with a wide variety of meanings to it, be it in how it devalues life to nothing more than a possession of the owner, which in turn has been expanded to people in certain ways, or in how the cage restricts humanity's greatest symbol of freedom, the bird, by forcing it to remain against its will in a single place, all the while keeping it grounded, so it can't fly to freedom. And because of this, the symbol of the bird cage has been expanded on and used in a wide variety of media, becoming, over time, less about physical entrapment and more about the helplessness of having no freedom of choice to do what one wants. And one of the best examples of this is the unconquerable Scarlet Snow Princess of Persona 4, Yukiko Amagi. Yukiko Amagi is one of the many members of the investigation team in Inaba who worked hard to uncover the truth behind the Midnight Channel and the serial killings that occurred during the course of Persona 4. Along with this, she is next in line to inherit her own family inn, the Amagi Inn, one of the few standout locations in the entirety of Inaba. Thus, she was always training up skills since she was very young to take on the required task. Though, to her, initially, it seemed like she had no choice in this future, which once she hit maturity, led her to desperately attempt to flee from it. Though, before we get too into that, let's understand the meaning behind her name and design. The name Yukiko Amagi holds a large importance to her actions and role in the story of Persona 4, not only connecting to her journey throughout that story, but her own inner self and visual design, starting first with her given name, Yukiko. Yukiko is comprised of the characters for Snow and Child, with an alternate reading being the Snow is replaced with Happiness, which is likely the in-universe reason for her parents giving her that name, though Yukiko always reads it as Snow Child, and that was likely chosen in reference to the yokai known as Yuki the Snow Woman, sometimes referred to as a Yuki Joro. Either way, the Snow Woman is often depicted as a meek and pale yet beautiful woman with long black hair and a kimono who appears within the cold, which Yukiko's design seems to reflect heavily, especially so when she's a focus in the story during the opening of the game. Along with this, the Snow Woman is a rather fragile spirit, being able to melt at nothing more than coming in contact with hot water, which in turn causes them to try to avoid entering hot springs. And I feel this aspect of them is reflected within the Amagi Inn in a certain way, as one of the greatest attractions to the Amagi Inn is its hot spring, so Yukiko, trying to avoid taking on the responsibility of inheriting the inn, is in a way her fleeing from a hot spring, much like the yokai that she seems to take a lot of visual inspiration from. And then we have her family name, Amagi, which when broken down is comprised of the characters for Heaven or Sky and Castle. So altogether, Amagi means Heaven's Castle or Heavenly Castle, which is a name that of course plays into a couple parts of Yukiko's own character, some which I can't cover here but will cover later in the video. But right now, now, her family name being this status symbol imparts this importance onto the Amagi Inn as a whole. Like this heavenly castle that she, as the princess or next in line to inherit, is expected to rule at some point. The title slowly becomes a cage around Yukiko, one that while it gives her inherent value, as the boys in school consider her someone worth going after because of the status she'll inherit when she takes on the role as the head of the biggest draw to Inaba, which in turn makes a lot of their attraction to her feel superficial in nature. But also also dictating what she can do in her life as she's been training for this task ever since she was even in middle school. Though this princess-like pedestal she was put on likely influenced her own shadows design along with her dungeon in the TV world, with it being this massive castle filled with grandiose halls of gold and luxury, acting as a physical manifestation in what the legacy of the Imagi Inn represents to Yukiko and the general populace of Inaba. Along with this, her being this princess stuck in the castle waiting for her prince to come rescue her is in relation to Yukiko's own helplessness on the matter of her own future, desperately relying on others for support while trying to run away from her issues all the same. And with that, this luxurious castle becomes nothing more than an oversized fancy birdcage than a home. Though interestingly enough, the castle and Yukiko's own shadow take on more of a European look than Yukiko's standard Yamada Nadeshko or Japanese appearance. And while this hammers home the strange or surreal nature of the TV world, it's likely a way of subtly implying how far Yukiko wishes to get away from her current life. And on top of this, the personality of Yukiko's shadow, while being influenced heavily by Yukiko's own inner desires to get away, also seems to be influenced by the projections on how others view her, turning the Amagi challenge into her own personality trait, with her hunting studs in a game show-like fashion where she effectively turns herself into nothing more than a prize that someone can win. Welcome to Not A Dream, Not A Hoax, Princess Yukiko's hunt for her Prince Charming! And I came prepared! I've got my lacy unmentionables on, stacked from top to bottom! 
I'm out to catch a whole harem and the best of the lot is gonna be all mine! Showing us that while Yukiko plays aloof and acts like she doesn't understand others' advancements on her, she is very well aware of her surroundings, which in turn plays with the idea that the birdcage reduces the value of one's life down to nothing more than a mere possession to own. Partly helped by the fact that birdcages during the early eras were considered a status symbol as well, something that only the wealthy or those with influence could possess. Though once confronted and then rejected by Yukiko, her shadow detaches from her and grows to take on a new, true form, this being a massive fiery phoenix sitting within an open birdcage shaped chandelier, reinforcing the intended symbolic nature of the birdcage being a status symbol by making it connected to a chandelier another form of a status symbol. The bird form also appears to be an interpretation of Suzaku, the vermilion bird, with it not only casting fire spells, but also when you return to this dungeon later on, you can acquire the Suzaku fan as one of Yukiko's special weapons. And while the shadow portrays its evolution as a form of empowerment, a lot about this form shows just how damaged Yukiko's perception was at the time, as not only does Shadow Yukiko rely heavily on her false prince that she summons during the fight, one which, if you defeat, never comes back, leaving her without anything to fall back on in danger. But along with this, the cage on Yukiko's birdcage is wide open, with Shadow Yukiko perched on the opening itself, representing how she's unable to act on her own, even with the door wide open for her to leave. She's constantly mentally teetering on the edge between freedom and security. Though once the shadow is defeated, Yukiko finds herself able to accept it as part of herself, when she is reassured by her close friend Chie, with them both admitting to each other that they were blinded by their own desires, that they couldn't see that the other was hurting or struggling deep down. Which in turn, with them accepting each other for their faults, they grow closer as friends. And the shadow evolves into a persona. Yukiko is forming into the figure known as Konohana Sakia, the goddess of Mount Fuji and volcanoes, who is the daughter of Oyamatsumi, the mountain god, and wife to Naneji no Makoto, the grandson of Amaterasu, whose marriage is actually in part attached to a famous story involving Konohana Sakia, in which after marrying Naneji, she quickly became pregnant, which led Naneji to believe her to be cheating on him, so he placed her within a burning hut, saying that the flames would only kill her if she was unfaithful. As not only did she give birth to three children who all exited the hut without issue, Konohana Sakia exited the flames unscathed. And due to her connection to Oyamatsumi, the mountain god, she was considered the princess goddess of the mountains, which in turn played into her own visual design in the game, with her taking on a very princess-like aesthetic. Along with this, her design also takes influence from science ninja team Gachaman's own June the Swan. Now, the story of Konohana Sakia is not only represented in Yukiko's own shadow, with it being trapped in a birdcage surrounded by fire in a similar way to the hut being surrounded by flames, but also her role as the goddess of volcanoes is why Konohana Sakia is flamed aligned in nature. Along with this, Yukiko's inherent flame connection with her red outfit is part of her rejecting her snow base given name. Along with that, Konohana Sakia's own connection to cherry blossoms plays very well with Yukiko's own connection to snow, as cherry blossoms are considered the snow of summer. Along with this, I feel partly that the fire spell name Agi being found in Yukiko Yukiko's family name Amagi also plays in part in the decision to make her flame base and why she got Sakia as a persona. Along with this, her awakening to her persona shared a similar message to Konohana Sakia's own story, with Yukiko being this princess-like figure who was put in the position that she was in because of an accusation ledged against her and her family in. And with her accepting this portion of herself is in a way her exiting through those flames stronger and unharmed for it. And on top of that, Konohana Sakia is in many ways a representative representation of Yukiko as well, as on the surface, Sakia is a representation of Japan and the Japanese way of life, with her symbol being the fleeting yet beautiful cherry blossom. Yukiko's own writing originally matches up with this idea very well, with her being a very traditional Japanese princess-esque character, with her introduction painting her as a textbook Yamada Nadeshko or idealized Japanese woman. But when she awakens to Sakia, she burns away this facade, as just like Sakia, who was prone to fits of rage and unladylike actions given her nature as the goddess of volcanoes, especially when she feels wrong, like in the story where she split a mountain into multiple mountains for daring to even try to be bigger than her perfect mountain Mount Fuji, Yukiko herself, after awakening to her persona, is prone to standing up for herself and lashing out more and more, especially when she feels like she's been wronged, even if sometimes she misinterprets the words or actions. P private lessons?
But on top of awakening to her persona, Yukiko also begins to open herself up to others more, unlocking the Priestess Arcana social link with Yu Narakami. As prior to the events of Persona 4, Yukiko was very much representing the reverse tarot, or the reverse priestess, which speaks about a person who has difficulty listening to their own intuitions and feeling isolated in their own thoughts, actively refusing to open up to others. And thanks to her actions during the events of the social link, Yukiko slowly turns into an upright priestess, one who listens to her intuitions rather than prioritizing the thoughts of others first. As during the events, Yukiko would be working to get away from Inaba, wanting to become a more independent person and began training to be an interior decorator. She would also begin working on her cooking during the social link, which is an activity that she wasn't really focusing on or trained into because she was expecting to inherit the inn as the owner, so she wouldn't be cooking for herself all that often. And in her training to cook, she would grow even closer to her staff working at the inn, which in part slowly whittled down her desires to leave Inaba as a whole, as she realized how much she loved the people she was working with. But what really caused her to change her course in life was during the events of the social link, she would find herself approached by tabloid reporters, wishing to discuss the murder of Miss Yamano, who was last seen in the Amagi Inn. They represented themselves as legitimate reporters, but it became very clear that their reports would just hurt the credibility of the Amagi Inn as a whole, as it seems that they were were reporting on the possible haunted nature of the inn itself, so Yukiko rejected their offers, after realizing how much damage this would bring to the workers at the inn. But the tabloid reporters would weasel their way back into the scene, and after realizing this, Yukiko was forced to take full action in defense of her inn and her family's workers, angrily refusing all future coverage and threatening to complain to the sponsors of the agency if they were to ever attempt this again. And it's this moment that makes it very clear what Yukiko's character story is actually about. It originally portrays itself as being nothing more than a tale of freedom versus confinement, a common feeling among youths with established expectations. They feel confined and want to do anything but what they're expected to, with her shadow directly mentioning wanting to get away and her main design aesthetic being a caged bird. Yukiko, deep down, felt in some way that running away from her problems was the solution. But if you listen closely to what the shadow was really saying, her problem becomes a lot more apparent. Someone please take me away. I can't leave here on my own. I'm completely useless. I have no hope if I stay and no courage to leave. So I sit on my ass hoping that someday my prince will come. As taking over the inn wasn't the issue, neither was staying in Inaba. The freedom that Yukiko desired wasn't that of the ability to go anywhere she wanted, but to control where her life was going. And it became very apparent to everyone in the end that she was feeling this way, and they all accepted that she was free to make her own decisions. But because she was never open about this, Yukiko didn't realize how much control she had over her life. Hence why the cage in Yukiko's shadow is always open, yet she stayed in because she didn't have the strength to leave. Because deep down, leaving wasn't what she wanted. And with Yukiko fully embracing her Amagi name, we see the Heavenly Castle portion of it fully realize in her persona's evolution, with Konoha Nasakiya becoming Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun and most important god to the Shinto religion. Being the daughter of Izanagi, Amaterasu is very famous, with one of the most well-known stories about her life being the Heavenly Rock Cave, in which Amaterasu, disgusted with the actions of her brother, sealed herself away within a cave, removing all light from the world, which caused all the gods of the world to gather around outside the cave to try to lure her out with many different plans, the solution being to hold a celebration that would catch the attention of Madarasu, compelling her to peek outside the cave, in which she saw a reflection of herself in a magic mirror that was placed in the entry. She reached out to touch the figure and then was in turn yanked out of the cave, the gods quickly sealing it behind her, once again returning light to the world. Yukiko's own story is related heavily to this, as the cave that Amaterasu would seal herself in is in part represented by Yukiko sealing off her own emotions from others, refusing to open up originally and running from the truth. But once she was compelled to look at herself in the form of her shadow, she was pulled out of the stupor that she had fallen in, allowing herself to shine once again and be more of herself. This idea is reinforced in Golden when you unlock Yukiko's third awakening in which Amaterasu evolves into Samoe Okami, the great imperial goddess, which is an epithet of Amaterasu, talking about how the emperors of Japan were all traditionally thought to be descendants of Amaterasu herself. Yukiko, being an Amagi, means that she would inherit the heavenly position in the form of the Amagi Inn, making her metaphorically similar to emperors of
of Japan inheriting the land of Japan from Amaterasu. And with this evolution, Yukiko seems to show signs of Amaterasu's own role as a divine maternal figure, with Yukiko desiring to be a dependable person, someone that others can rely on like she relied on them for most of her life. Taking on, in part, a maternal role for Rei during the events of Persona Q, or swearing to protect Labrys during the events of Arena. And on top of that, Yukiko was always trying to stand out this way since being saved, with her even trying to help Risei, telling her that she doesn't need to pick just one side of herself, that everyone deep down has multiple faces. Which helps explain why nailing down Yukiko's own exact personality is a bit difficult. As Yukiko is a very strangely aware person, someone who acts aloof a lot of the time, but sometimes is actually just completely unaware of her own surroundings. Likely from years of bottling herself up from others, she has some form of permanent social damage. Similar in nature to other characters who inherited status in the Persona series like Mitsuru. In fact, when Yukiko wears the C's costume in Persona 4 Golden, her win animation is actually the same as Mitsuru, making the connection seem very intentional. Along with this, she would hide things from others like her laughing fits due to her trying to maintain an appearance of a proper Japanese girl and not wanting to bring shame to her in. Though, after getting to know the investigation team more, Yukiko becomes a lot more open with herself, willing to even be the butt of the joke in certain places and very open-minded as she was fine with Teddy making her a real pair of the joke glasses to travel the TV world with, as she had a lot of fun wearing them because they were goofy and just brought her joy. She didn't care that they made her look silly. Along with this, Yukiko was very straightforward and unfiltered with her opinions, especially in future entries of Persona 4, like with the arena games. Um, can we just say that they're both fake? That's what it comes down to in the end, right? What? Why are you listening to him? Would that be bad? Of course it would! Assuming that from the start is pretty messed up! Eh? I'll say it one more time. If you upset me anymore, you're going to pay. Oh, I get it. <laughs> you're jealous. Come, Konohana Sakuya. Yuki-chan's seriousness gauge just exploded! She's also been shown to be rather fearless at times, especially in creepy situations, finding the absurdity of certain ghost stories to be more funny rather than horrifying. Though one thing that really shakes her is perverse actions, especially when she perceives them to be directed at her. Getting really annoyed and downright sadistic with those who do things like that. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Guess I missed. Though I feel like this is less her being a prude and more due to the fact that she had to deal with things like the Amagi Challenge or passing comments from certain guests at the Amagi Inn. Though with that all said, Yukiko still maintains a portion of her Yamada Nadeshko side. Not only with her fashion tending to fall more towards the elegant Japanese style, but her choice of weapon being a hand fan, which has a very complex history within Japan as a whole. As an accessory, it was commonly carried among people of status like princesses or royalty, along with warriors such as samurai commanders or tacticians, as its elegance established an aura of education, and it was also considered to be a very easy to make hidden weapon. Along with that, their beauty was unmatched, and in turn they became a very popular luxury item among early trade, and soon culture surrounding the fan would be established, with clan-based decorations going along with them, or dances designed with the fans in mind. And speaking of dance, Yukiko's own style of dance within Dancing All Night is another representation of her Yamada Nadeshko nature, with it being a mixture of upbeat ballet with traditional Japanese dance, resulting in her dance having an overall elegance to its style. Though a connection to her traditional nature that also builds upon her desire to build herself up is her cooking, which while yes, for the most part, Yukiko is depicted as a fatal chef, we do actually see her skills improve as the game goes on, and even in future entries for the most part, only having her return to Mystery Food X tier cooking when other fatal chefs intervene. In fact, for the most part, she isn't the one to blame for Mystery Food X. Though how Yukiko was able to grow so much over the course of Persona 4 was in fact due to the help of Yunarikami, and due to this, she became very emotionally attached to Yu, developing clearly romantic feelings towards him, to appear to be one of the game's intended love options, not only by creating scenes where Yu and Yukiko are alone together, like where you start the priestess social link, but also making her number be one 
one of the first courage related prompts that a new game player can realistically clear on top of that on top of that she's one of the few girls who actually shows to have direct feelings for you outside of her social link along with this in the manga adaptation of persona 4 it's heavily implied that she has a crush on you and she's one of the first girls to speak up during the goodbye scene at the end of the game running alongside the train with tears in her eyes and at the end of the day yukiko is just a great character in both base persona 4 and all the spin-offs that follow it and i feel like she gets a bad rep by a lot of people who either found her annoying thanks to her quirks or took fan and jokes as actual solid criticism of her character yet i feel her story of self-actualization and overcoming her childish mentalities of running away from all her problems really only gets better with time she's up there as one of my favorite characters in the whole of the persona series and i'm glad that she got a little reference in persona 5 showing that she stayed true to herself becoming a successful hostess of the amagi inn and reporters even saying that she's one of the reasons to stay the night at Inaba. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I've been wanting to and meaning to expand out to Persona content for actual literal years now. So I thought there was no better place to start than with one of my favorite characters in the entire series. And it's been actually very nice to work on this and I plan to do a lot more in the future. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash medinotthebadguy. And if you want to awaken to your own Persona, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com. It'll help you find that mask to deal with life's hardships. The mask is panties.